you know, everybody has their special contribution they can make in the world uh, as an individual and as a team or as a company. Yeah, I have a lot of passions, but I think people is my passion, really. I love people. How can I teach a person much more than they think that they can understand or, you know, a lot of, a lot of stuff that people long for doing, they can do it, but it's just they don't really understand themselves. They don't necessarily understand what it would take for them to do it. Uh, I was in a prison for young boys this summer um, and I asked them what did they long for the most and what they longed for more than anything else was to be understood. And in the end of that session he said to me, you have a choice now. Are you going to go in and face your fear and you know do something else in your life or are you going to run away again? You, you become like a child when you're afraid. Everybody does. You can be the biggest guy on the planet. I've worked with, you know, former gang members and stuff, you know, who realized that they were full of fear when they were in their gangs. It doesn't matter how tough you are. You all become like a child when you become afraid. And what does a child need when they're afraid? They need support. So, but it can also be other more bad qualities, you know, seemingly bad qualities like, I don't want to be uh, jealous, or I don't want to be this or that. And, and when you really start to own those sides of you and start using them for something meaningful, then you really realize you don't, you are complete. And I know a lot of people talk about this, that you are perfect the way you are, but nobody believes it. So you've got to explain to people, why is it that you're perfect the way you are? And it's almost like, uh, you could also say knowledge and wisdom you could make that distinction. You know, you can read a book and you can have understood every word, like you, you, you can read them out loud, but you didn't get the message. When I train people or teach people, they often say, yeah, I know that. And I say, okay, so you know that, but can you use it? That's what I'm interested in, because if you want to create social change in the world, you need to get less preoccupied with knowing more. Just know a little bit and start using it. It's the, there's a place for everyone, so, so go out looking and, and, and get, get started because it's really a huge world waiting with this whole world of wisdom and personal development and purpose. It's like, yeah, it's amazing. Hi, and welcome to another Epic Changemakers interview. Today, I'm sitting here with Pernilla Lauritsen from yeah. Denmark. And I met her and she had a, a really exciting talk in Denmark a few weeks ago. And it really struck me and my heart. And I grabbed her afterwards and said, I want to do an interview with you. And luckily, she agreed. And here she is. Uh, so thank you for joining us. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. It's my pleasure. So Pernilla is working for Mind Juice, where she's the founder, she's a coach, she's an author and a speaker. Um, in Denmark, she's been a lot in the media. Lastly, last night, talking about Mandela. And, yeah. And, uh, yeah, both on television, new newspapers, and I know she's really, really excited about creating social, social change in the world. Yeah. So, yeah, and I just read the MindJuice website said that MindJuice's uh, vision is to create an extraordinary contribution to the world. Yeah. What does That's that true. mean to you? Well, I think... Uh, you know, everybody has their special contribution they can make in the world uh, as an individual and as a team or as a company. And the contribution we would like to know is about knowledge and about uh, education in the area of identity and, and really get to know the wisdom in yourself and, and know what your purpose is in life. That is, uh, that is some of the things we focus on and also on what we call visionary leadership. So uh, 
big words, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I know that. But uh, it's really something that we're all very passionate about. Yeah. So I caught identity, wisdom, purpose, and visionary leadership. Yeah. 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 I feel they're all connected as a as a pearls on a string. It, it it starts with one thing, and then the next comes more naturally. Yeah. Mm. All right. So this is what would you say is your care and passion in the world? My passion. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I have a lot of passions, but I think people is my passion, really. I love people, and I really love uh, getting to know people, also um, also very challenged people. I think there's always something to to understand about a person. There's always, there's always more, more layers, and I find that extremely fascinating to, to what happens when you understand somebody else, and... For instance, how quick you can teach somebody else something new if you really have an understanding for who they are as a human being. Mm. So tell me more about that. Um, well, it's, uh, I think a lot of my fascination is um, with, also with children. I mean, children is when you get to know yourself. I mean, I work mostly with adults. But if you get fascinated with childhood and people's childhood, then you understand people so much better. And um, so over the years, I just got more and more interested in how can I teach a person much more than they think that they can understand or, you know, a lot of, a lot of stuff that people long for doing, they can do it, but it's just they don't really understand themselves. They don't necessarily understand what it would take for them to do it. And traditionally in coaching, it's about, it's a little bit about pushing people to maybe sometimes towards a shallow goal. But, um, well, at least it has the reputation of that in some certain areas. You, know, you probably know that. Um, but really the, the whole um, technique, you could say, of coaching, of the way you, you question people and they can get to know themselves so much more, suddenly they'll see that a, a minor change in the way they think about something can have them express themselves so much more or express their true, true purpose. So, like, recently I was working with a guy who's been um, dyslexic for many years. And, you know, in, in very short time, like, I guess within an hour, I, I helped him with um, learning to take note when he was reading. Yeah. And afterwards he said, I've been wanting this my whole life. How could you teach me that in one hour? Well, you know... I didn't teach him to read. He could read, right? But he had had some challenges with reading and he couldn't take notes. And it's really if you observe someone and you just observe them and you see where their barriers are at, you can teach them something so, not simple, but something so important in, in a very short amount of time. That was a long explanation, but that is what <laughs> fascinates me. It's like just watch people and you can help them so much easier than pushing something through. Uh, I was in a prison for young boys this summer um, and I asked them what did they long for the most and what they longed for more than anything else was to be understood yeah. so I like understanding or trying to understand people and and understand the depth of people and teach that to others it's like just step back a bit and observe people with love and you things become so much easier <laughs> Sounds yeah. like one of the big foundational stones for empathy, just yeah. understanding. Mm. Yeah, and it, you know, it can be. I'm fascinated by you know sometimes when when I like to work in areas where other people don't want to go. So we thought, why don't we go out in some of these areas where people don't want to go, and. Um, like, for instance, working with really challenged kids. And some of the actions can be very brutal. You know, it can be violence and, and stuff like that. But it's actually, it's the same thing. If we could stop judging and step back and observe, there's always a reason why people do what they do. And if you can find that why, the reason inside of them, like the real reason, it's often connected to fear and terror and hurt. 
And if you can get into that, then you can really heal something and people can change a lot more quickly than what we normally expect of them. And we all have these fears in some ways. Yeah, sense. we do. Right. Yeah, at least from my knowledge, we, I see people are afraid. I mean, yeah. it's also a fear. Is, um, there's this very famous quote from Gandhi who said that it's not hate that's our problem. It's fear. Yeah. And I think that's a, it's a really profound statement because a lot of people, we don't like hate. We don't like evil. There's a lot of things we don't like, but it, but if it all comes down to fear, uh, then we can start looking at fear um, like that's even deeper, because it will be the fear that generates the hate or the evil or whatever negative feeling you want to name. And fear is something I think we really should teach kids to deal with. Yeah, because we all face fears sometimes. Mm. All right. So for you, how? What's the way you deal with fears and how do you approach fears in yourself? Well, I think in order to deal with fear in, in a constructive way, we need some wisdom. Like there are so many old traditions from like globally. You can look in the East, in the West, South, North. We all have thousands of years of tradition of, of dealing with fear, but it seems like we've forgotten it because in our society today, we escape fear by being entertained all the time. So entertainment will, will have us not really sense our fear. Mm. And uh, so I was, I was very afraid as a, a teenager and I didn't even realize it. And I think that's what happens to a lot of people. I didn't realize I was afraid, but the way it was expressed was, I said no to a lot of things I longed for. You know, people would say, oh, don't you want to play in our band? And I would be like, uh, no, thanks. And I, I, inside, I just so want, I, I played piano since I was a kid and I so wanted to play in the band, but I said no, you know, and I said no to so many things that I, I, end up, I ended up almost in a prison, I felt. I was very shy. And... Um, so I just became a very silent person. I would never say something in a room full of people. That was, I would rather die than doing that. So actually, I met a great coach who, um, in a workshop that I did out of desperation. I mean, and he, by accident, he, uh, he helped me because we had to get up in front of the room at one point. I didn't realize this, so I ran out of the room. And long story short, I ended up in the bathroom because I had left my shoes in the room. It was a hot summer's day. And the, the, actually, they had to stop the whole training, and the teacher ended up coming out in the bathroom and asked me if I needed some help. <laughs> I just wanted to die. And he coached me. That was my first experience with he, – he really slowly asked me, like, whether I could survive this state my body was in like my knees, my stomach, my chest, my throat, my heart, like, and he, he was so peaceful. And I knew there was like hundreds of people waiting next door. You know, everything was on hold, but this guy, he was just like, no, no, we have all the time in the world, just breathe. And in the end of that session, he said to me, you have a choice now. Are you going to go in and face your fear? And, you know, do something else in your life? Or are you going to run away again? And I don't know. It was like that moment. I'll never forget it because I just knew in that second, like, I really had a choice. Um, and I went in there. And I, I really promised myself from that moment on that I would be courageous. I would take on, you know, being courageous in my life. So the way I deal with fear now is I am, I'm honest about it. I don't deny I have fears, uh, you know, um, even before this interview or before I was on TV yesterday, when it's important things, I always get afraid. And then I, I get support. Yeah, I really get support from other people. And I have 17 great colleagues at work. You know, I'll tell them uh, when I was on TV yesterday, I had a young guy who I've trained who's only 20. He was just sending me a text and I said, you know, 
can you uh, can you support me because I'm going on television in 10 minutes I'm really nervous and he's like sure yeah, yeah my teacher I'll support you you know <laughs> <laughs> so basically anyone anyone can support you so if they are asking for help yeah it's really asking for help and a lot of people don't want to do that yeah so there's also something we have a big nonprofit uh, project we had this weekend where we train 100 teenagers in visionary leadership and we train them this weekend in dealing with fear and something that really struck me with this generation was they don't really trust anyone if i ask them how trusting are you with other people it's like they really don't trust people and i've been thinking about that it's like what what, where is that coming from? And I really think it has something to do with the media and politics and, and parents and teachers that, that so, they've met so few authentic people that there's this distrust inside that has to be somehow built up again in order to say yes to support. So we had a long conversation about that and they saw new things about, you know, taking the risk of trusting someone. But I really think if you want to work with your fear, you, you become like a child when you're afraid. Everybody does. You can be the biggest guy on the planet. I've worked with, you know, former gang members and stuff, you know, who realized that they were full of fear when they were in their gangs. It doesn't matter how tough you are. We all become like a child when we become afraid. And what does a child need when they're afraid? They need support. It's really simple. Yeah. What is your insight or inner game change that has been most profound, most powerful or transformational for you as for being a change maker? So what, what has been like my inner change? Yeah or insights that just like that you see now that mm. is kind of this could be the most important one that I had. Well, I think I have three and the one I just told you about, mm. that was the first time I met my fear. And had I been in some like from some old culture or something, there would be rituals. So I would have naturally met my fear, you know, and, and that, Luckily, that happened to me, and that was that changed everything for me because I just I, I chose that I will not live in fear. Yeah. I refuse that. So, so that was a big one. The second one was I think for me when I realized that we are not the same. I mean, it seems obvious that people are not the same, but it, I'd actually been a coach for a lot of years because um, I've been working with this for seventeen years now, you know, and I think. For the first seven, eight years, I knew we would look different and we are somehow different, but I didn't realize how different we are and how, especially how different our fears are. So you could have fears that, are, that I'm so totally not afraid of, and I could have fears that you're like, ah, oh, that's no problem. <laughs> I didn't realize that. Yeah. I thought we had more or less the same fears. Um, so that was a big insight because the moment I realized how different we are, then I could, you know, I could support people so much better that that, that was big. And I think the last insight was uh, when I realized that we all have shadows, like we have dark sides in us, like parts of us that we don't like. And when I realized that I didn't have to erase those sides, but it was a matter of um, not just accepting, because we always say that, oh, you got to accept this and that. But it's more about um, say, yes, I am, for instance, I'm pretty, I can be very slow as a person. I eat my food slowly. I walk slowly. I do things very slowly. I didn't, and I try, always try to hide that. So I try to be fast. Yeah. You know, and but I love being slow. I love taking my time. And in kindergarten, I was always the last person when we were on school trips and stuff. You know, I was always the last kid. I just remembered that. And the moment I realized, you know what? Yes, I'm slow. You know, I'm, you're fast. I'm slow. Whatever. But what comes with being slow is being thorough, being deep, observing. There's so many qualities that goes with it. So, but it can also be other more 
bad qualities, you know, seemingly bad qualities like I don't want to be uh, jealous, I don't want to be this or that. And, and when you really start to own those sides of you and start using them for something meaningful, then you really realize you don't, you are complete. I, I know a lot of people talk about this, that you are perfect the way you are, but nobody believes it. So you've got to explain to people why is it that you're perfect the way you are. This, that seems like one of the things we hear even since we're yeah. like, little kids. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then it kind of grows on us. Yeah. Yeah, because it's like, you're perfect, my son, but don't do this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. So, yeah. Yeah. So we need, we need some of those um, new age slogans or I don't know what to call them yeah yeah we like with Mandela's death you know the the Facebook was swimming over in in strong Mandela statements and stuff and and I read someone who had written you know it's all good that there are these statements again and all his quotes and but how many of you really know what it means you know how many actually practice what this guy was talking about. And I, and I think sometimes it's because we don't really understand. We, we say, oh, you got to accept yourself. You got to, you got to this, you got to that. And it's a little bit too fast sometimes. Mm. Yeah. And, and, and as the journey continues, what we hear with those short sentences deepens yeah. and become goes from something well that's cool into something wow that's profound yeah exactly yeah yeah sometimes we've got to read a book three times to really get it and and we're a little bit busy saying no i read that already you know i know it all so that that whole knowledge thing really gets in the way of deep knowledge yeah what's the difference between knowledge and deep knowledge well i could call one of them like fast I don't know how to do all the distinctions in English but it's almost like uh, you could also say knowledge and wisdom you could make that distinction you know you can read a book and you can have understood every word like you, you, you can read them out loud but you didn't get the message yeah. um, and you didn't even realize you didn't get the message because you were so busy reading the book um, same thing with a movie, you know, we've got to sometimes slow down. Like in India, they'll read the same book over and over. It's almost like a child, just to do the analogy. My kids, they see the same movie a hundred times, the same one. Uh, adults, we see one movie, it's like, no, no, I, I've seen that one. Let's see another one. <laughs> so I think knowledge, when I train people, or teach people, they often say, yeah, I know that. And I say, okay, so you know that, but can you use it? That's what I'm interested in, because if you want to create social change in the world, you need to get less preoccupied with knowing more. Just know a little bit and start using it. That's what it's all about. And, and wait, I mean, you don't find many schools who really challenge their students in using what they know, because that's when they get really sometimes a little bit upset and grumpy. And that's when the difficulties start, you know, and, and that's. Oh, that's so profound is to, to, to train people in using what they know. Yeah. And then it's, it sounds like then it's, that's when it turns into wisdom. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So um, that, that's something I love. I really love when people come back and they go, you know, I tried out this thing. Like I tried to communicate with my father or my mother or my, I would have sworn I couldn't have this kind of conversation. Um, like I had another uh, student who had called his dad. They hadn't really been having a close conversation like his entire life. And then after a few conversations he calls his dad up and they speak for four hours and he's like how could this happen and it's really it can happen because you change your your the what, where you're coming from you know if the person if you come from an open heart and it sounds so cliche but if you really do it and you come from an open mindset then you can have conversations you never dreamt about um, so I, I normally say that everything can change in one conversation because it really depends on who you're being when you're having the conversation. Yeah. All right. So 
to practice what we preach. Basically. Yeah, that's so, another slogan, you know, so, like we so, say it all the time. <laughs> so what we, if the listeners to this, yeah, having heard this conversation, maybe getting some knowledge, where do they start practice it? What's the first step? So you could start with a book. You can start with a get in somewhere where there's other people. So, so, you know, you can, that's really fascinating. I think for a lot of people go into a, a seminar or somewhere close to where you live or far away from where you live, it doesn't matter. And, and then I think get into a training that really speaks to you. Like it could be three days, it could be one day, but, but I think it's important to, to go with your intuition, go with the, this is the right place for me rather than, Oh, everybody says I should go there. I think that's a, that's how I meet a lot of my students. Is they they come in and they don't know exactly what it is, but they just get this feeling of this is the right place for me. And if you do get that feeling about a place, maybe you have to look. Maybe you have to go to five different places, but don't give up. It's there. There's a place for everyone. So so go out looking and 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 get get started because it's really a huge world waiting with this whole world of wisdom and personal development and purpose. It's like, yeah, it's amazing. Great. Um, so if people want to know more about mind use and what you do and uh, go in that direction, where do they go? Where do they so we have a, yeah, we have a, a website is uh, mindjuice.com. Uh, and it also has a translator on it. So, uh, it's a Google translator, so I don't know, you know, but you can still read. Uh, well, we have a lot of stuff on the website. And then we, we do have, um, we have free, um, what do you call it, like free seminars every month because we really believe that everybody should have access to wisdom and knowledge and stuff. So we always have free seminars every month in Copenhagen and in Aarhus. And then uh, we just have started doing uh, some stuff in Dubai as well and, we we'll also do some uh, retreats in France and in the States, but they are like, that's more, you know, that, that's a bigger commitment. So the easy access stuff is in, in Denmark right now. And then we're uh, working on getting more online stuff uh, available. You can also always um, book a free session with one of our coaches and they, you know, they can be on Skype, they can be in English, they can be in, we have, you know, they can speak a lot of languages. We have people who speak uh, Arabic. We have people who speak <laughs> English, you know, everything. I think we can handle a lot of languages. So people can just really call and book a session and see if, if that's something they would like to continue with. Thanks so much for, for sharing your, um, your wisdom your, uh, you. uh, You're and your passion for personal development and social change. And bringing those two together. Uh, it's quite an astonished. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy and excited about hearing more about what you've done. Well, thank you so here. much. And, and thanks for, for letting me talk about it because we really do want to, like, we really feel like everybody, especially young people, should have the right to, you know, this kind of education. They shouldn't just be offered normal academic education so that was maybe the one last thing i would like to add is our nonprofit project for kids or for young people is called young role model academy and uh, we have kids from i think we have now from 20 different ethnic backgrounds participating and um, they have a facebook uh, page as well where they have a lot of cool stuff they put up and we really want to take that into the world so that's our huge social change project cool. that cool. we're that we hope will grow. I'll put a link under the video. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us. Okay, thanks.